Biggie, we're back at Fit Club Summerland, man. Yeah, guys, the last time we were here was many, many months ago. They weren't even done with this mural. They hadn't even brought in all the equipment yet. So we wanted to come back and show you the guys the gym now that it's complete. Uh, today we're gonna do, you know what? We're training chest, front and side shoulders today. But I don't know which one we're gonna do on film yet. I don't know if we're gonna do chest, front and side shoulders. So you're gonna be surprised. Surprised. You'll be surprised. <laughs> but yeah, we're really glad to be back in this gym. It's a great gym. Come check it out if you're in Vegas and I hope you guys enjoy the show. All right guys, so we're actually gonna train chest today. And uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is a superset. A superset to get things started, get the blood really pumping and flowing. Uh, this is a machine that we used to have at Gold's Venice that we used to use all the time. So happy to see it here in Fit Club. So we're gonna jump on it. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a fly and a press combination. Uh, on the fly mo motion, what I'm gonna really focus on is getting a really, really good stretch at the bottom. I'm not gonna hold the stretch for more than about a second but I'm gonna really settle into that stretch and really, really try to pull on the pecs. I'm gonna do that with a general body position and then on the second movement on the press, you're gonna see I'm gonna sort of angle my torso back a little bit to make it more of an incline press. And on that movement, I'm gonna focus on getting a really good hard contraction to the top. So this is a really, really excellent superset for chest because we're gonna focus on the stretch first, the contraction second, we're gonna hit the general chest and the upper chest. Give this a shot if you have similar equipment at your gym. Sit forward on the seat, put my feet up, angle my chest up, incline press, big squeeze at the top. Is a full range of motion stretch to contraction. Okay guys, for the second exercise, we're gonna work on uh, this pretty cool incline press machine. It's really, really smooth, feels really good. So uh, what we're gonna do on this one is we're gonna bring out some of the intensity techniques that I like to. And we're gonna do a 10 rep set. The first five reps are gonna be four second negatives. And the second five reps are gonna be four second holds at stretch. So we're using two different techniques, two, two different techniques that break down muscle fibers and really, really initiate muscle growth. So it's a very, very tough set, and uh, it's gonna give you a great pump. So no matter what the machine you have, barbell incline, Smith incline, you could use this technique during one of those sets, give it a shot for upper chest growth. Okay, so in the first five reps, like I said, Dave is gonna be doing four second negatives. And negatives, is absolutely one of the best ways to traumatize muscle fibers, break them down, and set hypertrophy. 
into action. The second five reps, which he's on now, he's holding the deep stretch position for a full four seconds. This is equally, if not even more painful than the negatives. And this also traumatizes muscle fibers and sets off muscle growth. Great set. There's like an incline machine press, like sort looks of. Like, look look yeah, what's up your club today. And then Hi. we love that, uh, hey, puppy. That, that cable set up over there. Doing? so good for so many what things. Doing? We used to have it at Gold's Bend. Okay, so for the next movement, uh, we're doing what has become one of actually my favorite chest movements for the upper chest and really, really feeling the fibers on the inner chest as well. Uh, this is a close grip incline uh, chest press and you'll see the way that I do it. But the, the thing I want you to really focus on is that when I do the movement, I'm not pushing the resistance straight up and down. I'm actually pushing it back up over my head, which gives a very, very unique feel to pushing with the upper chest. And of course, because we're also using a close grip, what I try to do at the bottom of the movement is actually contract my pecs really, really hard and squeeze them together before initiating the press, which helps me to keep the press more in my chest and out of my front deltoids. So this is a really, really great movement, gives you a unique feel, um, and it's something really that you can add into your chest workout because it's something you've probably never done before, so it'll bring about new soreness and new muscle, muscle growth. So I'm squeezing right here. And by not locking out, keeping tension on the chest. All right, guys, uh, we started off this chest workout with a superset. We're going to end it with the superset. And uh, this is for you guys out there who really, truly love to torture yourselves. So what we're going to do is a, a flat dumbbell fly, but of course, we're not going to do it the regular way. We're going to do it the Merlin approved way, <laughs> which is we're going to start off on the first rep. We're going to hold the stretch position for 10 seconds. Really open up the chest, really stretch out all those fibers. We're gonna do five good clean reps. And then when we come down for the sixth rep, we're again gonna hold that stretch for 10 full seconds. That's when the pain really starts to kick in. And then we're gonna do five reps from there until we hit 10 reps. Uh, then we're gonna drop to the floor and we're gonna do a movement that you don't see too many people do. Uh, but actually it's a really, really good movement. It's a partial movement for chest. It's a flat dumbbell press on the floor. So obviously you're not able to come down all the way, but it gives a really, really good focus on the contraction. Um, and when you're really exhausted from doing full range of motion flies, um, it's a great way to just get that final pump in the chest. So give this a try if A, you love to torture yourself, and B, you want bigger pecs. All right, so you can see as Dave comes down, he's gonna hold that stretch position for 10 seconds. Really try to pull the pecs from the sternum to the armpit, open it up, and start to traumatize those muscle fibers. <sighs> now he'll hit the rest of the first five repetitions as normal. Good form. And then he'll settle back in again for another 10 second hit. Just so you guys know, studies have proven that when you stretch a muscle under tension and hold it. It is a very oh. powerful anabolic igniter. Oh. Even without even moving the weight, just by holding it there. And he finishes up the set. Now he'll go into the dumbbell floor press. Again, a very underutilized movement. A lot of power lifters will use this movement to build 
strength and the lockout of repetitions. Now he's just gonna do some basic good solid reps. About 10 of them. Get that final pump in the chest. Great superset. All right, Biggie, any good uh, Ask Moran question this week? Yeah, I mean, this, this question is something that's gonna be debated forever, but I'm gonna give you my take on this question, because obviously this is Ask Merlin. <laughs> um, so somebody asked me, they said, you know, uh, what do you think is, is the more important parameter for muscle growth? What, what's gonna bring about muscle growth more effectively? High volume training, where you're just kind of more going for the pump, you know, not necessarily training to failure every set, um, but just, you know, overloading the muscle with reps or more high intensity training uh, and maybe, you know, less overall sets going to failure or beyond failure, that kind of a thing. My answer comes from a couple of different things. Comes number one, I think most of all from experience, my own personal experience with training and with training clients. Um, and science as well. So, you know, without, you know, taking two hours to answer the question, my answer is I believe that lower volume, higher intensity training in the long term is going to be more effective for muscle growth. Muscles do not grow easily. The body does not prefer to carry a large amount of muscle mass. Uh, so gaining muscle mass is something that has to be absolutely forced. One of my favorite quotes, which I actually came up with myself, <laughs> um, is if you want your muscles to grow, you can't whisper at them, you gotta scream. And this basically means that, you know, you can't just you know, in the beginning, when you're a beginning trainer, you have never had that kind of stimulation before. You know, pretty much any type of weight training is gonna bring about muscle growth um, just because your body's not used to it. It's like somebody who drinks. If you've never had any alcohol in your life, you can have, you know, half a beer and get drunk, you know, but after a while, that half a beer is gonna do nothing and then you need more and more and more. Same thing with weight training. So this is probably a little bit more directed towards a little bit more of a seasoned lifter who's been in the gym for a little while and has been you know, training and uh, is beyond that beginner point where just any stimulation is gonna produce growth. So if you're, if you're not pushing the muscle to a point where it's you know, reaching that failure point or going beyond failure, uh, I don't believe it's gonna be enough to trigger muscle growth, to trigger the pathways that cause the body to, you know, break down muscle tissue and need to rebuild them, the fibers bigger and stronger. I think the only way to really get this done is to really, really push them hard by training to failure and sometimes beyond failure. So the only caveat to that is the harder you train, the less you can train because obviously if you're really pushing really hard, like just for example, the workout that Dave and I just did for chest, there really wasn't that many sets, but I feel completely destroyed. My chest feels completely fried. I don't think that I could do much more than that. And if I did do much more than we did, the sets would probably be subpar. So I think that people should focus more on um, less volume and higher intensity in the long term. Let me just say that there is a room there is room for higher volume training. I think every now and again, uh, your central nervous system especially needs rest from all of that really, really high intensity training. So sometimes it's better to back off, maybe not go to failure in any set, maybe focus more on the pump, moving a little bit faster in your workouts and going a little bit higher volume for short periods of time for like a recovery period and also to just you know keep the muscles moving and flush with blood. But to answer your question directly, I think that for most lifters out there, uh, everything else being even, um, high intensity training is the way to go um, because that is what your muscles are going to need to force muscle growth, which is really not easy to do. 
Um, I know that, you, that a lot of people out there see a lot of the very, very high level bodybuilders in the IFBB, you know, using higher volume training a lot. And they, of course, can't argue. You can't argue with their results if you see it, but you know, they have something else that they're utilizing and they're using PEDs, which kind of changes the equation. And I still believe, the way Dorian Yates believed, the way Mike Menser believed, even Lee Labrada, those guys, I think that people could spend less time in the gym doing higher intensity, no matter what your level is, no matter who you are, and achieve better results in the long term. So that is my opinion, and I hope that helps you.